Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. As you guys can see, I could not get my camera up and running as I am currently away from home and staying in the imperial capital of Granada in Nicaragua. The Wi-Fi is brutal, so I am being forced to make this recording on my phone today. However, I'm going to be showing you guys a absolutely great way to clear the very hard coral prison crisis dungeon and uh, hopefully that's going to be able to get you guys through this one they are definitely ramping up in difficulty uh, going from the grostia path to the corel prison now if i go over here to my team i am going to be running cloud Aerith, and barrett into this fight um, with a power of 262,000 cloud i will be running as a ice lightning hybrid build Aerith as a healer slash buffer and Barrett as a debuffer slash buffer. Now, before we go into the team build, I am going to go here to the map where I'm going to show you guys my basic pathing through the dungeon. So I'm going to be starting down here. The first thing we'll do is take out the Assault Scorpion. We'll start with taking out the first two adds and then taking out the Assault Scorpion himself. He can break our magic defense, so we will be bringing the Mithril Rod to help us against that in this fight. And that Mithril Rod is also going to be very handy against the Mole Crawler later on. All right, after we take out the Scorpion Sentinel, we are going to run up here, get this treasure chest after taking this one back here, and we are going to fight our first set of adds. After we beat those adds, we will run down here past the second boss all the way into this corner to get the blizzard cocktails right here then we will double back and take on the mole crawler we'll start this fight by engaging both of our summons taking out the adds and doing a sizable chunk of damage to the mole crawler after we take him out we are going to double back here and we're going to take on the two worms the bloody worm and the land worm one of which is weak to lightning the other which of which is weak to ice we are going to, and this is important, take out the worm on the right side first, the worm that's weak to ice. Um, and the goal is to kill it, this worm when it goes into its sigil break form, because if you kill it in the sigil break form, it causes an interruption, which gives you a, a pretty good lapse of time to do a sizable amount of damage to the second worm. Once we take out the worms, we are gonna come down here and fight the Queen Grass Strike and her two minions right here. She can be a little bit of a pain, especially if you don't have a Healing Asuna Poison equipped. Um, so we are gonna want a Healing Asuna Poison for this fight and a physical defense break, uh, but we are gonna be bringing that anyway, and I will go over that in the team build. After we take her down, we're gonna come back down here, go down this little ramp and take on Dine himself. And yeah, so that being said, let's go over to the actual enemy info. I'm going to go over to the things that are of the most importance um, in these symbol enemy lists. The first is in the Scorpion Sentinel fight, it's important to always take out the Scorching Claws first um, when they are adds because they can reduce your physical defense and increase the amount of damage that you are taking. When it comes to the Scorpion Sentinel himself, he's going to deal a lot of really strong magic attacks. So, and on top of that, he is going to reduce our magic defense. So his first tail laser has a high chance of taking one of your characters out unless you uh, heal from that debuff. So we are gonna do that by equipping Mithril Rod. Another thing that's extremely important for this fight, um, especially against the Scorpion Sentinel, is we are going to equip only physical uh, sigil breaking materia because he will counter magic sigil uh, breaks. So any Ruin Ruz, etc., he will counter. Um, other than that, the Mole Crawler, he is also going to deal magic attacks and inflict a magic defense down with the Tear Gas Bomb, which we will counter with the Mithril Rod. Um, but other than that, he's not too bad other than the fact that he's super tanky. The Queen Grass Strike is not so bad except for the fact that she can poison you, so we do need at least one healing Asuna Poison on our team. Uh, in terms of the Worms, they can AoE Darkness you, so we are bringing two healing Asuna Darknesses. Um, we are going to bring one D Brave, and we are going to bring the Assault Gun on Barret in order to better tank 
these two monstrously uh, heavy hitting worms right here. But other than that, they're not too terrible, although it is pretty hard to get a solid score on this one. I'm normally getting around 40,000, but it's still enough to get the S+. Plus. All right, other than that, we just have Dine. Dine has no weaknesses, no resistances. He does do a final attack, Molotov Cocktail. However, if he had already done it two times in the fight, correct me if I'm wrong, if he's already done it twice, even if you kill him, he won't use the Molotov Cocktail. So unless you're like really high DPS team and killing him super fast, then you probably have to worry about it. But I haven't had to worry about it just because he's doing his first two Molotov Cocktails before I'm killing him. Dine is going to have a lot of powerful physical, physical attacks, which means that Barrett's uh, assault gun is really going to come in handy. On top of that, we are going to be bringing the uh, Barrett's weapon that reduces physical defense. Um, which is going to work great because whatever uh, attack type you're using against Dine, he's going to buff against it. So he'll use Barrier if you're physical attack dominant, and he'll use Mono Ward if you are magic attack dominant. He can also inflict AoE Darkness with Suit Gun, all right? And so that is going to be the overall strategy going into the fight. So those are the bosses. Now let's get into the teams here. Cloud, like I said, is a lightning ice hybrid. He is running his ice arcanum costume in the first slot paired with Shiva's diamond dust, which is a fantastic combination for Cloud in this fight. The Murasame is in the first slot here because it's very important that you run at least one triangle sigil boost weapon. Um, there are two fights in which it can be very hard to break the sigils without a sigil boost weapon. And that's gonna be against the land, the two worms and against Dine. So I highly recommend slotting a weapon that does this. In this setup, Murasame is gonna go in the first slot, followed by the stream saber in the second slot here. Therefore, Cloud can cover our lightning and ice damage, all right? Aerith is going to be using the Garnet's gown for healing. However, the Chocobo, uh, suit and the rosy battle garb will both work fine. She is running healing wind as the limit break and we are running fairy tales since she's our primary healer and then the very handy mithril rod here for the magic defense up increase. Other than that we have Barrett running the fiery cape boosts HP and physical defense. He is running Ramu's judgment bolt here which is very handy in this fight. In the first slot, he has the W machine equipped, which breaks physical defense to high if you're at OB6 and to mid to high if you're less. However, if you don't have it OB6, this is still clearable. I just got this to OB6 and I had already cleared this dungeon before without it being at OB6. It just makes it a little bit easier. In his sub slot, he's going to have the assault gun here, probably one of the most clutch weapons to have in this fight. It's very, very, very useful and I highly recommend using either Barrett or Matt. The nice thing about Barrett is that the animation speed in which he casts Agitation is so fast that it really makes this weapon uh, S tier in my opinion. Now going into the Materias, we have a Healing Asuna Darkness on Cloud, a second Healing Asuna Darkness on Aerith, and then a very important Healing Asuna Poison on Barrett. In the second slot on Cloud, we have a D-Brave, then we have a very important Lightning Breach Materia on Aerith. This is our only Imperil we are bringing into this, and I recommend bringing the Lightning one over the Ice one. Um, in Barrett's second slot, we have a Thundara Blow, so he can help us against the Mole Crawler and the Lightning Weak uh, Worm. And last but not least, we have three Triangle Sigil Materias in the third slot, all of them are physical. Don't forget to make those sigils physical or you will pay the price against the Assault Scorpion. Going into the actual individual builds, Cloud is sitting at 113k power, 9.3k HP, 4.1k physical attack, 139 physical defense, 119 magic defense. His R abilities are as shown here. Okay, and I will pop them up here for you guys to check out. His sub-weapons are going to be the Crystal Gloves, which boosts HP and Lightning Potency, the Bald Eagle, which boosts Physical Attack and Ice Potency, and lastly, the Hellhouse Caller for the HP Physical Defense. Moving on to Aerith, she is going to be sitting at 74k power, 8.1k HP, 2k Physical Attack, about 2k Magic Attack, 137 Physical Defense, 121 Magic Defense, and a whopping 2500 Healing. 
These are her R abilities, as you guys can see, with healing being the most important, then physical defense and HP to follow. Other than that, her sub equipments are going to be the free event weapon, the feather scatter, followed by the guard stick, the best uh, healing sub weapon equip in the entire game. And then lastly, followed by another free event weapon, the giant fork, which boosts HP and physical defense. Uh, preparing your physical defense is very important in this dungeon. It's going to help you uh, greatly overall. Lastly, we have Barrett here sitting at 74k power, 9.3k HP, 2.9k physical attack, 135 physical defense, 109 magic defense. His R abilities are as shown here. And as you guys can see, we do have some lightning potency over here on Barrett, which is going to greatly help him deal some damage against the mole crawler and the worm. If we go into the sub equips here, I do have the Seaside Caller equipped on him for the HP Lightning Potency. We do have the Hell House Cannon right here for the HP Physical Defense. And lastly, we have the Broadsword Axis, which boosts Physical Attack and Lightning Potency. All right, so that is going to conclude the build for going into this dungeon, guys. That being said, I'm just gonna go straight into it. I'm gonna uh, top up one of my dungeon keys and we are gonna get straight into this fight. I hope that my guide helps you guys to clear this dungeon, get that S plus rank, and to get all the goodies. All right, so right off the bat, we're just gonna run straight into this fight with the Assault Scorpion. I am gonna switch to uh, manual mode and one time speed. That's gonna be the first thing we do. All right, we're gonna target the Scorching Claw with Barret, immediately follow up with Cloud streaming uh, Freezing Stream. And then the moment that happens, I'm going to switch over to the blue goo. And then Cloud is going to Thunder Strike. All right. Then from here, Barret is going to debuff the Scorpion. We're going to save in Grace on Aerith right here. All right. Cloud is going to get off one attack, Barret one uh, break. And then we are going to guard against it right here. All right. Here we go. Here comes the Tail Laser. All right, we did barely survive because the uh, saving grace fell off there. So you might want to wait to cast it a little bit when you guys do your dungeon run. All right, but from here, I'm going to wait and do a lightning breach with Aerith. And then we're just going to get straight into damage. Thundara blows with Barret and Thunder strikes with Cloud. In the meantime, Aerith is going to slowly take herself back up in HP. All right, while well, we do as much damage as possible to the Scorpion Sentinel. The goal is to kill him in his counter mode right here, um, which should be more or less pretty simple. I'm just going to use Thunder Strikes with Cloud, uh, but this is one of the easiest sigils to break in this entire dungeon. So it should get broken right about here in about two seconds. One, and there it is, followed by one hit from Cloud. And that is going to take down the first of the five bosses of the Coral Prison. All right, now let's move on and take our first trance ability. This guy is not so bad, um, especially with the Mithril Rod. It really makes the fight a lot easier. All right, so I am going to take the Ice Potency over here and the Lightning Potency, the one on the right here. I don't like the negative effects in dungeons, especially if you don't need to take them. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab this chest. All right. And then hopefully if we're lucky, I can show you guys a little trick. If we don't trigger the ads before I get this chest. All right. Perfect. All right. So we are going to get the thunder cocktails and I'm actually going to pop one of these thunder cocktails right now. The nice thing, the trick is, is that is if you pop a cocktail on a character, even if you fight several sets of ads, um, it won't actually give up that cocktail buff until you fight your next boss which is going to be great for this first set of ads because they are weak to lightning so against these ads i'm just going to lightning imperil them once followed by clouds thunder strike and that's going to be basically everything we're going to do to take down these ads all right another lightning imperil followed by cloud and we're just going to rinse and repeat that one last time right here all right, so here is the Lightning Breach. Gonna wait just a little bit to get my ATB up. And that is gonna take down the last Moth Slasher. All right, so that's the first set of ads. The second set of ads upcoming are going to be weak to ice instead of lightning. Okay, here we go. We're gonna run past the Mole Crawler right here. 
We're gonna run over into this corner where we are going to initiate our second set of ads. This is going to take care of all the ads in the dungeon. At the beginning of the fight, switch over to the Scorching Claw and take him out right away. That's the first thing you wanna do here. All right, here we go. Next thing we're gonna do is take out the Queen Grass Strike in the middle. All right, so Barrett is going to debuff every single time before Cloud hits. And then the goal is to take out this last one right here before it gets off the Leaping Strike. All right, so hopefully we are going to have a chance to do that. Um, not sure if it's going to get off or not. It can be a little bit tricky right here. Uh, we didn't get the chance to switch to the defense stance. But it's going to be fine. We are going to take it out right here and we're going to be all good. All right, so that's going to take out the second set of adds right there. They can poison you, but it normally doesn't come till late in the fight. All right, perfect. There we go. That's going to take us through that. We don't have to worry about any more adds for the rest of the dungeon, which is going to be uh, definitely a little bit of a relief. After grabbing these blizzard cocktails and the summon charges, we are going to run back here to the mole crawler. Um, I'm not exactly sure why sometimes this is purple instead of gold. Um, it looks like this is a harder version of it. I'm not exactly positive what triggers it. If you guys know, I would love to know. So please let me know in the comments below. If we go into this point right here, I'm just going to put one special supplement on Aerith and I'm not going to heal anyone. Cloud already has the Thunder Cocktail, but I'm going to pop one more on Barret right here. As you guys can see, this is proof that it does last through ads as Cloud still has the Thunder buff right here. After that, we are going to go straight into the fight against the Mole Crawler. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop a lightning breach on it and then drop all of the summons at the same time plus Aerith's healing wind which is going to take us back to almost full. All right so here comes the lightning breach followed by the summons and the heal. All right guys after this this is going to get us a nice little chunk into the boss's health plus we're going to take down the adds at the same time. So it is the best gateway into in, into the intro of this fight. All right, at this point, Aerith is just going to keep up the Lightning Breach the entire time. Barret is going to be doing Thundara Blows, and Cloud is just going to be dropping Thunder Strikes the entire time. Yeah, that's essentially this fight in a nutshell. We'll wait until he does the Tear Gas Bomb, and then I will show you guys how we are countering that magic defense down with the Mithril Rod. All right, here we go. Re-putting on that Lightning Breach. And it's looking pretty good. Cloud has almost got him down to half health. All right, here comes the Showdown. Barret's gonna drop another couple Thundara Blows right here. And we are preparing for using Saving Grace on Aerith right here. Boom, there's the Magic Defense down. We're gonna counter it with Aerith and just keep on doing damage right here. All right, so now he's gonna begin charging Blazing Ray. Aerith is gonna use one Lightning Breach right here, and she's still going to have enough um, ATB to cast Saving Grace right before it gets off its big hit right here. All right, we'll switch over to the defense stance, tank the Blazing Ray, and the goal is to kill the Mole Crawler before it gets off its second Blazing Ray. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna Lightning Breach it one more time. It's gonna get stunned from using its big attack, and we are just going to take it down as quickly as possible right here. All right, Cloud's gonna get off another hit. Aerith is going to heal everyone. Just bring them back up to full. Barret is going to get off a Thundara Blow, and Cloud should finish off the Mole Crawler right here and now. Oh, it is pretty close right there, but not quite. Alright, there we go. Alright, so that's going to take down the Mole Crawler. He can be a bit of a pain. Honestly, he's just tanky, and the fact that it takes so long to kill him uh, kind of lowers your score on the time. But we are going to get a score of 59,000, which is pretty good. I say shoot for killing him before that second Blazing Ray. You, should, you guys should be totally fine. All right, so here we are. Let's choose our trance abilities. 
I'm going to choose the one on the right over here, the Enhanced Total Defense, Physical Defense, Magic Defense. I think that one is definitely the best of the three. After that, we're going to head over and we're going to take on the first of the harder fights. This is going to be the Worms. We're going to stop right in front of it and just reassess. I'll Special Supplement Cloud. And just so you know, Barrett will not be able to Physical Defense break these opponents. Aerith will be able to Lightning Breach one of them. And it does look like both of our summons are back in charge. So I will Blizzard Cocktail Cloud, then Thunder Cocktail Cloud, and Thunder Cocktail Barret. All right, that being said, at the beginning of this fight, I'm going to target the left worm, Lightning Imperil it, and then drop the summons. All right, here we go. Right when they're about to cast, I'm going to drop the summons. Boom, that's going to give us a little bit of cast time right there. And just so you guys know, we are going to kill the worm on the right first. I only switched to the left one at the beginning just so that I could imperil it so that Ramu would do extra damage. Okay, but we are gonna kill the worm on the right first. I highly recommend that. This is gonna be a lot easier for taking down these bosses. I'm gonna show you why here in a second. All right, here we go. They're gonna sandstorm, that's an AOE darkness. All right, there we go. And from here, Cloud is just going to go full-blown into damage. Barret is just going to be casting Agitation, okay? And Aerith is going to slowly start healing everyone back up to full while we prepare for this first big attack right here. All right, here we go. I'm going to wait to cast Agitation right at the very end. All right, and then we're going to tank the first hit. All right, there you have it. I'm gonna switch to Aerith. She is going to cure from that, switch back to Barret, and then we're gonna prepare to agitation from the second one. See, look how fast he casts that, guys. That's why Barret is so damn good. All right, perfect. Now we're just gonna roll straight into Aerith's healing wind, perfectly coming in handy right here. All right, after that, now is the time to lay into the damage on this worm right here. We're going to have a nice little window to do some damage. Okay, Baird is going to keep casting Agitation. And we're just going to do as much damage as possible here. Cloud is going to be the big killer. But we don't want to necessarily kill the worm yet. We want it to start its uh, Sigil Break. Alright, here we go. Going to get off a heal with Aerith. And here we go, it's gonna be down in the red, I think, here. Barret will cast Agitation again. Essentially, he's just lowering the extent of damage that they're gonna be doing right here. All right, Aerith will get off another heal. Okay, here we go, here we go. They're gonna do Sandstorm. All right, and then they're going to go straight into uh, the Sigil Break right here which is gonna work perfect, because we're not gonna worry about breaking the sigils. We are just going to kill the worm. All right, that's gonna take one hit right there, and two, which is going to interrupt the second worm and give us a nice window to do some damage here. I'm gonna immediately lightning imperil it. Okay, we're gonna get back our um, limit breaks right here, or our ATB up. Okay, and now we're just going to do as much damage as we possibly can. Alright, and before the worm goes into his little charge state, I'm going to drop both the limit breaks right here. Alright, boom. That's going to definitely give us some help right here. And the goal is to kill the worm before it goes into its next attack. He does have a little bit higher health than I normally have him at right here. So hopefully we can uh, kill the worm before he does his next attack. But either way, we'll just have to see how it goes. Alright, here we go. It should just take one more hit from Cloud. I'm going to drop double Ruin Residuals on Aerith and then go into the Thundara Blow. And that is going to take out that second worm right there. So even though we more or less handled this fight pretty well, you're going to see that I'm still not going to break more than 40-something thousand points for it. I think it's just the amount of damage that we take in that fight from the Worms, but it's not going to hold us back from the S-plus ranking at the end of the dungeon. 
All right, here we go. I'm gonna take the one over here, enhanced total defense once again on the right. Then we're gonna double back here and we are going to take on the queen grass strikes. This can be one of the hardest, most annoying fights in the whole dungeon. Um, I think that I am going to drop a special supplement on, actually, I think I'm going to do Cloud since he's more important than Barrett in this fight. If Cloud goes down, you basically lost the fight. Um, and then I'm going to drop a Blizzard Cocktail on Cloud along with two uh, summon charges right here. All right. And last but not least, I'm going to drop one Ether on Barrett so that we can break the physical defense of the first enemy right at the beginning of the fight and then drop Shiva. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna go into this fight. The first thing we're gonna do is switch over to Barrett. All right, here we go. And boom, it's going straight into Shiva right after that physical defense down. That's gonna take out both the adds. And then the next thing we're going to do is try and get as many hits off with Cloud as we can in this time because it's going to quickly recover its physical defense break. Okay, Barrett is going to agitation during this point in time. Okay, hold on. And Cloud is going to break this sigil as quickly as possible. Right here, so we're almost good. All right, and now we're just going to do as much damage as we can, as fast as we can do it. All right, it should just take a couple more hits from Cloud to finish off this enemy. And that is going to do it. I'm going to let you guys know that boss or that enemy right there does not always go into that sigil break form right there. Sometimes it removes the physical defense down, makes itself impervious to physical defense down, and then poisons you. If it does that instead of going into the sigil break phase right there, it can be a lot more gnarly. So make sure that you are casting agitation, healing the poison, and keeping your characters alive. All right, for this one, we are also gonna take the enhanced total defense over here on the right side, physical magic defense. Now, if we look at our chance abilities, we have physical defense plus 100%, magic defense plus 100%. So we are pretty much set to go on taking down Dine. Um, I'm not gonna worry about my characters. We do have two elixirs. All right, so I'm gonna run over here. We're gonna go down this little ladder and we are gonna be more or less ready to take down Dine here in a second. I'm gonna go over to my little bag of goodies. I'm gonna Elixir Barret, then I'm gonna Elixir Cloud, all right? Then I'm gonna Special Supplement Aerith. I'm gonna use one Blizzard Cocktail on Cloud and we are good to go. This fight is going to start the exact same way we did the other one. Barret will uh, physical defense break Dine and then we're gonna open with both summons here. All right, here we go. There we have it. Boom, straight into the summons. And I think I'll leave Healing Wind just in case we need it later on. All right, so we'll start here with Ramu. All right, it's important to make sure that Dine is always broken on his physical defense in this fight, especially when he casts the barrier on himself later on. All right, after that, we're just gonna roll straight into uh, attacking right now. He's gonna start casting Molotov Cocktail here in a second. All right, I'm just going to switch over to Barret, cast Agitation right before it goes off, and switch to the defense stance. All right, with Aerith, I'm going to Kiraga, and we're just gonna roll back into damage here. His physical defense buff is about to wear off. I'm gonna recast it with Barret, and we're just gonna continue doing as much damage as we can as fast as we're doing it. All right, here we go. There, he's cooling down. I'm gonna keep uh, going. I think that I will agitation here with Barret. Aerith is going to cure everyone of their uh, darkness. Cloud will do one cure and then back to the damage right here, making sure we get off the physical defense down before Cloud is attacking. All right, we are gonna have that sigil break uh, coming here in a second, guys. All right, here comes the S-Mine. All right, but we are looking fairly good here and our summons are almost back, which is gonna take us the battle in the end. All right, here we go. All 
All right. I'm gonna stay on cloud. And hopefully we can get all these sigils broken on him in the meantime. I'm gonna quickly drop a healing wind on Aerith just because dying can do a lot of damage really fast to your characters during this. You can counter that by using agitation on Barret during this sigil break phase, um, which is gonna make it a lot easier to survive during that time. All right, but as long as you break him right here, just go straight into your damage. And that's going to basically wrap up the fight, guys. I'm going to end it with the two summons right here. Um, and it's going to be more or less over at this point. All right. So there you have it. Dine is going to fall to one knee. And we are going to take down the dungeon. Um, I appreciate you guys being patient with me. I know that the video is not as fun without the camera on. You can see my expressions. But to be honest, guys, I recorded it down here seven times this dungeon i beat it seven times in a row s plus and every single time my recording was lagged something went wrong i tried to do everything i could i even recorded it outside where i was closer to the wi-fi modem even though there was like 50 gnats flying around me the whole time and it was brutal today was a hard day this dungeon this final video took me probably like five hours even though i could have done it in like 30 minutes earlier so i hope you guys appreciate it and i really hope that it does help you guys clear this dungeon and i do appreciate your grace in um letting me make this one video that doesn't have the camera and is maybe of slightly uh lower quality than what you're used to but i'll be back home um, within a few days and back to my normal setup. All right, guys, so there you guys have it, 777,000 points. There is the S plus clear as promised. If you guys have any questions about this fight, if you guys have a different build, if something's just, uh, you know, maybe, you know, not working based on how I've talked about it, don't hesitate and don't be shy. Drop a comment. I'm happy to help you guys out. I always have been. And, you know, I'm here to help you guys clear this content. So just ask me the question and I'll help you the best I can. If it's a complicated question, sometimes it's better to just come join our Discord. It's called the Curseborn Discord. And you can find a link in the description of all the videos that I make. Um, so we'd be happy to have you there. We got a ton of awesome players, free to play minnows, dolphins, whales, and a bunch of new players from Southeast Asia. That being said, if this video was enjoyable for you guys today, if it's helping you get the clear of this new Crisis Dungeon, don't forget to drop a like. And if you guys are interested in seeing more of my videos to come out for Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That being said, I hope you all have a wonderful night, take care, and peace.